Groucho, we have George Jarvis and Phyllis Diller who want to play You Bet Your Life, so folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Mark. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. <laughs> Phyllis Diller and George Diller. No, Phyllis Jarvis. Uh, no, George Jarvis. Huh? Phyllis, I'll start with you. Now, where are you from, uh, Phyllis? I'm from Lima, Ohio. <laughs> Isn't that the very latest style, the... Yes, th this is it. This is the latest chemise straight from Paris. Oh, I remember <laughs> when they used to wear a chemise underground. And <laughs> now they wear it right open the open. Uh, you got this from Paris? No, I got it at the May Company. And the May Company in Paris? <laughs> no, in Los Angeles. You know that song, Would You Love Me in December, as you do in the May Company? And, <laughs> and your, uh, your name is Phyllis Dilla, huh? No, no, sir. no. no. Oh, You're George, uh, George Diller, huh? George Jarvis. George Jarvis. And uh, where is your uh, native state, George? Well, I come from Pawhuska, Oklahoma. Oh, Pawhuska? Yes, Pawhuska. Well, tell us about Pawhuska. I haven't been there in some years. What is it like there? Well, actually, I, I don't know anything about it. We moved from there to Puerto Rico when I was only about a year old. Well, tell us, what, what is it like in, in Puerto Rico? Is it anything like Pawhuska? I don't remember much about Puerto Rico. We left there when I was about a year old and went to Plainfield, New Jersey. Do you remember anything about uh, Plainfield, New Jersey? Well, very little. We moved from there when I was about five. George, you haven't got much of a memory, have you? <laughs> well, I, I guess not. Uh, Are you one of those absent-minded professors? Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm in the guided missile program. I work for North American Aviation. With your memory, you you working on guided missiles? Well, the missiles have the memory built into I them. See. Well, folks, fill up the martini jugs and head for the hills. <laughs> Do you ride one of these things? No, I haven't ridden one yet. Oh, well, what is your job with guided missiles? I'm field service manager for Rocket Dyne Division of North American. Our job is to build rocket engines and see if they get in missiles and see that they operate right. We have men out in the field uh, seeing if these engines work right. Uh -huh. And then while you're working on these, you watch the Sputnik go past, is that it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, do you predict that rocket ships uh, in commercial flights uh, will be around soon? Oh, certainly. I think particularly for long distances and if you're in a hurry. Uh, well, for instance, if you uh, wanted to go to Australia, say, you could do this in a jet ship in 10 or 12 hours. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a hurry, we can get put you there in a rocket in an hour. You mean the Russians are going to go to the moon and we're going to Australia? <laughs> Good idea. Say, that may be the solution for the whole thing. <laughs> we're just going to hide in Australia until the whole thing blows over. Well, you must get pretty uh, keyed up working around all that complicated machinery all the time, huh? What do you do for relaxation? Oh, I do several things. I play the trombone a little and oh. play the viola a little and I bulldoze. What, what do you bulldoze? Your wife, you mean? <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. I, uh, I have a bulldozer. <laughs> well, is it a male or female? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's male. Well, what is a bulldozer? Is that a tranquilizer for bulls? <laughs> well, a bulldozer is a great big tractor that has a, a blade on it in front. You can let it down, you can push dirt with it, and it's uh, powerful, makes a lot of noise. Well, how does this relax you, I mean, uh, running a bulldozer? Oh, it's no worse than playing golf or, or, or hunting or fishing. It, Gives me good physical exercise. And Why? You're just sitting in this thing, aren't you? Uh, it jounces you around a lot, and you have to work to drive it. Oh. And it, uh, it gives me good physical exercise, and I get a feeling of accomplishment. When I do something, I get results, good or bad, I get them. Well, you ever go to Palm Springs in it, or, uh, you know, make trips? In it? Oh, but I've sure considered it on the Hollywood freeway, and it'd really be the nuts for that. Put it halfway down. <laughs> What kind of things do you shove around with this uh, toy? Well, I've got a mountaintop in Topanga, which I'm flattening. Mm. Are you angry at this mountaintop? <laughs> yes, sometimes. You flatten mountains because this gives you a feeling of power, is that right? It? That's George, right. you're in trouble. <laughs> I guess so. 
You may think you have a hobby, but it's more serious than that. You have a neurotic compulsion. <laughs> and I think you should see my psychiatrist. He'll be back next week. He's up in Arizona. He's filling up the Grand Canyon with dirt. <laughs> Let's, let's find out some more dope about you. <laughs> Are you married? Yes, I've uh, worn a wedding ring for 18 years. Really? Well, two more payments and it'll be all yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was there about your husband that interested you when you first met him? Do you remember? Yes, it was sort of a mating thing and I just took one look at him and I decided, well, this is the way I want my children to look. Well, did your children look like him then? Yes, all five of them. You've got five of five children? Yes. That beats a full house, and you've got that too, I imagine. <laughs> now, fellas, what do you do to break up the monotony of housekeeping and taking care of five small gorillas? <laughs> well, uh, I'm really not a housewife anymore. You've got five kids, and you're not a housewife? I beat the rap. <laughs> you mean your kids came through with push-button controls? <laughs> How is it you're able to get away from housewifing? I'm an entertainer. When well, did you arrive at this uh, decision? Well, I was much too old. You mean to all do five it. kids were squawking one morning? They and were says, yelling and screaming. And you <laughs> says, uh, enough of this, I'm going to be an entertainer? Well, sort of like that. I decided it was silly to wait any longer because I really always felt I could do it. Mm -hmm. And so I made a, an appointment for an audition. Are you, are you still uh, an entertainer? Yes. Where are you employed now? At the Blue Angel. Oh. Uh, could you do a little of your act now? I'd, I'd love to. Say it's 30 or 40 minutes? Huh? <laughs> it's kind of difficult. I mean, I can't. I know it is, but the audience, uh, they're in a receptive mood right now. Well, I know they like my dress. <laughs> but uh, Mr. Marks was talking about his psychiatrist, and I decided I'd surely better be well adjusted before I went into such a shaky business. And uh, uh, so I decided I should be analyzed, and I went to this analyst. He's helped me a great deal. In fact, uh, I am so much better now that I get to sit up. <laughs> and, uh, well, he's cured me of a lot of things that were making me pretty insecure, like, uh, insecure, like, well, uh, I used to be freckled, and he cured me of that. This is rust. <laughs> Are the five kids in the audience when this goes on? <laughs> if they were, I'd be doing better, you know? <laughs> well, uh, well, the thing is, I did hope to make money, and, and I still have to take the thrift flight, things like that, and I hate the thrift flight. I mean, like, well, none of the costly extras, like landing gear. And, <laughs> and the, the minute you're in one of these wicker seats, I, I'm nervous, you know? And by then, it's too late, you got the marks, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, the start is 86 usually because, well, it's, she said she was one of the right sisters. She built the plane. And uh, <clears throat> I said to her, I said, honey, sweetie, I had been shopping at the May Company, and <laughs> it rubs off. I said, <laughs> uh, would you please tell me uh, how long it will be before we get to Los Angeles? And she said, I don't know. We've never made it. <laughs> That was very good, Phyllis, and I'm sure you're going to be a big success in show business, and I think you made a very wise decision. Well, now it's time for you to get moderately rich, so we're going to play You Bet Your Life. Now, you select a dictionary quiz. I'll give you the words. You give me the meanings. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Are you ready? One answer between you now. Now, what is a TP? Tent for an Indian. Yes, or I was hoping you were going to say wigwam, then I could have had a joke about her head, you see. How <laughs> good should I? Yeah, well, it's too late now. Huh? You have one right now. Is that what you're supposed to say? Uh, yes. Yeah. All right, now what is a cravat? Tie. N well, we say necktie. Necktie, all yes. right. You're halfway to $1,000. Two now, more right, and yours. Yeah, now what is, uh, what is, uh, uh, what is corpulence? Obesity. Oh, or blubber. <laughs> Get the next one right and you'll have a thousand dollars. Now, what is a numismatist? Uh, numerologist? No, no, the no. other one. Give him the other one. Uh, 
<laughs> no, that's a coin collector. You were right. Did you say that and you, you talked him out of it? No, I didn't. Well, you now have one wrong. If you get the next one wrong, the game is over for you. What is a carafe? C-A-R-A-F-E. A pitcher. Yeah, I thought it was an animal with a long neck. <laughs> it's a pitcher with a long neck. It's a, it's a pitcher. <laughs> Well, it's a water bottle. And I you're guess. back on the right track with one right now. Yes. Now, uh, what is a clavicle? A bone? Well, which one? There are a number of those. Well, it's somewhere in the France? shoulder. Huh? It's somewhere in the shoulder, isn't it? Well, that's close enough. It's the collarbone. You have two right now. You have to have that because there's no place to put the button. <laughs> they haven't worn in years. Now, what is another word for apothecary? Druggist. Druggist on the market, yes. One more right, and you'll have $1,000. What is uh, claustrophobia? Fear of small places or I thought it was, places. Uh, no, I thought it was being afraid of Santa Claus. No, that's right. <laughs> Fear of enclosed places. Well, you won $1,000. Now, you can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at 10000 So go over there and sit down and think about it. And thanks for being on the show. Thank you. And now, in just one minute, we'll have the story on the big question. All right, George, let's find out what our last couple has decided. All right, George Jarvis and uh, Phyllis Diller, would you come back, please? You won $1,000 so far. If you decide to try for the 10 and you fail, you wind up with a total of 500. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? We're both going to You're going to go ahead? We're go All right, now you're going for the big money. Get together, pick a number from 1 to 10, and then spin the wheel. If any number besides the one you pick comes up, the question is why 2,000. If your number comes up, the question is why 10. All right, what number do you want? Five? Five. Give it a 12. Oh. Well. Your number was five and it came up seven, so this question is worth $2,000. You ready? The first Negro nation in the British Commonwealth was established in 1957, formerly called the Gold Coast, when it was a British colony. This new country has received widespread news coverage. For $2,000, what is the new name of this new nation? Talk it over. <laughs> What's the, uh, what's the answer you've decided on? If you don't know, guess. Libya? No, it's Ghana. Spelled G-H-A-N-A. -A. It was recently made a country, I think, last year. I'm sorry you missed it, but you wind up with $500. That isn't too bad. Congratulations, and thanks for being with us.